we are going to be painting um, a little uh, five by five canvas with palette knife roses on it and it's a very simple uh, technique it takes a little bit of getting used to so I'm going to give you a little expression that we live by here where you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit so as we're painting this uh, as you're working along and if something doesn't turn out exactly the way you think it should just kind of roll with it because it's going to be just fine in the end all right so if we could switch now to our overhead camera I have a little 5x5 five five canvas that I've given a couple of coats of folk art uh, matte acrylic paint uh, in the color called Wild Rose. So I've painted my canvas with two coats of the Wild Rose and I've let that dry and now I'm going to use just a piece of ordinary chalk and I'm going to sketch my design on here and this is just to help me with placement so that I get everything kind of where I want it to be. So my rose is going to be basically kind of a, a circular shape. So I've just sketched a little circle on there. And then I want you to think of the rose as having an opening at the top, which is kind of an oval shape. And then we have the front of the rose. And then we've got kind of petals that come around the outside edge of our rose. So it's kind of like a teacup sitting on a saucer. But on this design, we want to have a couple of leaf shapes. So I'm going to just sketch a couple of triangles on here for leaves. Higher up. Yes. There we go. All right. It's so easy to get it off camera there. All right. So let me, I'll just zoom in the old fashioned way so that you can see how uh, this is all of the design that I need on there that's showing me where my rose is and where my leaf shapes are. And so we are ready to put some paint out on our palette and get started on this. So I'm going to use some Folk Art Midnight Garden and you're not gonna need much paint. So I'm gonna put out a small little dab of that, like about the size of a jelly bean will be good for this. And then I'm going to pick up one of my Folk Art Select Firm Bristle brushes. And these are available at platonline.com. I think you can also get them on Amazon.com, but these are fabulous brushes for canvas painting. They have a bristle that's a little bit firmer than a Taclon bristle, and they're great for painting on canvas. So no water in the brush, no water in our paint. I'm going to pick up a little of my Midnight Garden, and I don't want too much paint on my brush, and I'll show you how we're going to quickly paint in our leaf shapes. Don't try to paint a whole leaf. I'm going to use the corner of my brush. I'm going to set the corner down and just enough pressure to tickle the canvas. And I'm going to just come right up next to my rose, applying a little bit of that Midnight Garden. Then with the same corner of the brush, I'm going to loosely fill in my triangular shape. There's simply not much paint on the brush, and I am not filling this in solidly at all. Let me show you what this looks like. And it certainly doesn't look like much, but that's all we need on our leaf form. So I'm not picking up any more paint on my brush, but I'm going to turn my canvas, and I want you to pay attention to how I'm holding my brush. I put the handle of the brush in the palm of my hand, and then I just grasp the brush. So I'm holding it as far back on the handle as I possibly can. And this will make me paint in a much more relaxed, casual manner and not try to render things. So here we go, taking my little bit of paint on my brush and I'm applying that using the corner right next to my rose. And then I'm going to loosely kind of fill in my triangular shape. And again, don't get hung up on the fact that you're painting a leaf because when you look closely at this, it is absolutely not much to it. Just a little dark color on the canvas and it's in a kind of a triangular shape and that's all we're looking for. It's always funny to me that people will look at a painting that I've done like this and like, oh, mine doesn't look like yours, yours is so perfect. And I'm like, mine's just some scrubbed on paint on the canvas and that's all you have to do too. I'm picking up a very small amount of paint on my brush Again, using the corner of the brush, 
scrub this color on right next to the rose and then very quickly kind of form a little triangular shape that's got some broken edges. Having interesting outside edges is probably the most important thing you can do on your little painting. All right, so we have three leaves on here, but we need some other, what I'm just gonna call background goodies. So no more paint on my brush, and I'm going to just loosely kind of scrub a little color on. Pat, 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 and scrub, scrub, scrub. Not really painting anything, not painting my leaf shapes, just putting a little dark color here on the canvas, and some of that will get covered up, and some of it will still show through. So that's the initial step of getting some color on our canvas, getting things established, and now I'm going to use a little folk art patina, which is a nice uh, kind of bright, um, it's not quite aqua, but it certainly is a, a very bright uh, kind of uh, turquoisey blue-green color. And I'm going to pick up a very little bit of paint on my brush. I did not clean out my brush, didn't even wipe it out, but I'm picking up some of this patina on my brush, just mixing in whatever's on my brush in with this lighter green color. And if I want to be certain that there's not too much paint on my brush, I use uh, blue shop towels for my paper towels. And I'm just going to touch the brush onto the shop towel and that's going to take all the excess paint off of my brush. Now on my leaf I can lay in kind of a center vein line just with a couple of touches of the brush. So I didn't really paint anything in there, just touch the brush to the canvas a couple of times and now I'll use the corner of my brush and I'll just tickle on one side of that a little bit and maybe just a dab over on the other side and we're almost done with that leaf. So I'm going to do the same thing on my other two leaves. I'm going to tap in a little bit of a center vein and then use the corner of my brush and just kind of tickle the canvas a little bit. Not fussing and not fretting over this at all. And I've got one more leaf to do, so I'm going to tap that center vein on. If I need to, I can pick up a little bit more paint and take the excess off on my shop towel. I really don't want much paint on this canvas at all at this point. Using the corner of the brush, tap and tickle to add a little bit of a highlight here and there. I'm going to pick up a little bit more patina on my brush, take the excess off on my shop towel, and I'm going to emphasize a little bit of a highlight on the leaf, just tapping and tickling use the corner of the brush, just tap and tickle. And remember our expression, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. So tapping and tickling a little bit of paint on there and we get three beautiful leaf forms done just that quickly. So here is your close-up shot showing exactly what we've done to those leaves and they're really is just not much to them. If you try to turn them into something, you're going to be working way too hard and your efforts are kind of wasted. I mean, all we need is a suggestion of a leaf because if you're looking at a flower painting and you see something green next to it, chances are people are going to assume that it's probably a leaf or some kind of foliage and that's really all anybody needs to know. I have an artist friend of mine and she's a beautiful floral painter and does these wildly um, impressionistic paintings and she has this great expression she goes when you're painting she goes you want to paint the dog don't paint the fleas so we're not painting any kind of detail on this today it is just a suggestion of leaves and now we're going to do a suggestion of a rose so I'm using some folk art true burgundy and I just put out a little tiny jelly bean of that and I'm going to pick up some of the true burgundy on my brush and not much of that green is coming out. Remember, I've not put my brush in water at all. I'm going to take the excess paint off of my brush just by touching it to my shop towel and I'm going to shade my rose. So inside the rose is where this is going to be the darkest. So I've got my brush once again, handle of the brush in the palm of my hand, 
grasp the brush and then use only the corner of your brush and we're putting a little bit of that dark color right in the darkest part of the rose and then we'll just lightly scrub our canvas and we'll tickle and move a little paint off so here is the expert application of our dark shading on there doesn't look like much and it doesn't have to we're just giving the suggestion of some darkness down in the center of our rose now we'll put a little bit more down here kind of around the bottom of the rose and again we're just kind of scrubbing the excess paint off on our canvas so here we have <laughs> I know I'm looking at this and I'm thinking there's not much to look at there and I'm sure you all are looking at this and going well there's certainly not much to look at there. <laughs> there isn't a lot to uh, to look at at this point but we're about to light this painting up. So let me just take a moment and show you a couple of other paintings that are done this similar kind of way. Uh, here we have a very vivid green background and we've done some uh, pink roses on here using our palette knife. A very quick, very effective way to give the um, illusion or the impression of a rose. And then another painting that I did on a darker burgundy background uh, and actually put these roses into a vase. But you could see we've done white roses here that have little hints of green and blue in them. But again, it's the palette knife that really brings the rose shape together. So everything starts with a little bit of color underneath it and now we're going to layer on our rose petals and make them very, very bold. So I'm putting out a little bit of titanium white on my palette and I'm going to pick up my trusty palette knife. All right, this is a number six uh, palette knife and it has a very, uh, I can never figure out how to hold this, it's got a very bendy, flexible blade to it. So that's what you want. You want a palette knife that's very, very flexible. You don't want a stiff palette knife for this. You don't want a huge palette knife, nor do you want a tiny one. But I'm going to make a mixture of uh, true burgundy. No, I'm not going to use true burgundy. I'm going to use some of my wild rose, the background color that we painted our canvas with. So I'm going to use some wild rose and some titanium white, and I'm going to mix these two colors together here on my palette to make a lighter pink. By using the same color that I painted my canvas with, we really are going to create a very harmonious rose. So mixed up my pink color. Always mash your paint thoroughly and then push it back into a pile. That way your paint will stay wetter longer on your palette. If your paint is spread out it will be thinner on your palette and will dry out a little bit more quickly. So I'm going to load my palette knife just by picking up some paint and pulling it into a little bit of a loading zone here and I don't want much paint on my palette knife so I have a thin amount of paint on my palette knife and we're going to begin to paint the upper part of the rose then we'll paint the front of the rose and then some of the outside petals. So picking up a little bit of paint on my palette knife and I'm going to hold my palette knife almost parallel to the surface and I'm going to touch the brush, the brush down, I think of it as a brush, touch the palette knife to the canvas and you can see that some of the color pulls off of the palette knife and others just kind of sputter off a little bit. Let me hold this up so that you get a very good detail shot of how this paint is coming off. If you have a lot of paint on your palette knife, you will have big blobs of rose petals. And that's not what we want here. Very small amount of paint so that you get that kind of speckling and sputtering of color coming off of your palette knife. That's the most important thing. Let me see. I'll hold the painting up here and the palette knife on top of it so that you can see where at the end of the palette knife the paint is off of it. I've rubbed all of the paint off of the palette knife so there's not much paint there to begin with 
and it's all come off in making my little giving the illusion of the petals to the rose so pick up a little bit more paint tap 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 picking up just a little bit of paint on the palette knife and then I'm concentrating the tip of the palette knife adding a little bit of paint right along the outside edges of the rose if you think you were going to paint a absolutely specific kind of petal or a shape of a petal or something you will be so disappointed it's very haphazard what happens and then I'm putting a little bit down in there so that the center of the rose has a little bit of life to it but that's all we're doing at the back of the rose at this point so let's start coming across the front of the rose and I'm going to pick up paint on my palette knife the same way tapping it into my loading zone but then I'm going to I'm going to pick one side or the other of my palette knife and I'm going to use this side so I'm going to scrape a little bit of paint so that I've got a little bit of a ridge of paint there and with that ridge I'm going to lay down a stronger uh, bit of color on my rose so coming across the front of the rose see we've got we've had more paint on there so we've got a more opaque petal not picking up any more paint on my palette knife and I'm going to put another stroke across the front and then another one up this side here so now we've created the top of the front of our rose so picking up paint now across the palette knife tap 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 I'm going to just lay on a bit of a highlight coming right across the front of my rose and I might have to tap a few times to get that little bit of paint that's on my palette knife to come off on the canvas so again remember that expression you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit all right so that's the front of our rose established now we're going to put some of those little petals that are kind of as the rose opens and they start to kind of fall away from the flower itself so picking up a little bit of paint on my palette knife tap 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 on the palette and we will put a petal that's reaching out from the rose one thing I want you to all remember is that your rose is not a circular flower when those rose petals start to open and fall back they form points on them so some of your roses are very very soft edged petals and some are quite angular and that's perfectly fine you need to have a little bit of everything going on so that your rose is as interesting for your viewer as you can make it all right I'm pretty happy uh, surprisingly happy with how this turned out and I should leave it alone but as you all know human nature forbids that so we're just going to put a little bit more out there okay now I'm going to really stop and leave this alone and I can dry this just a little bit so that this is set up or you can paint into it wet I think most people are comfortable with having it dry so Excuse the sound of the hair dryer for just a moment, but we're going to dry this really, really quickly. Okay. That is, it's not completely dry, but it's certainly dry enough to go ahead and do our next step. I'm going to take more titanium white and add a very small amount of my light pink mixture creating a very very pale pink but not quite white so I think white would be just a little bit too harsh on our little canvas and there's really not much left to do with this rose we're going to uh, kind of repeat our steps and I'm going to pick up a little bit of paint on my palette knife and add some highlight petals here at the top of the rose not covering up everything that I have done previously 
and then we're going to repeat some of this highlighting across the front of the rose. And I think this is quite pretty here, but we've got that nice kind of angle there at the top of our, um, kind of the top front of the rose. And we will put on some highlights across the flower and we will pull on some angular petals here. Pull on some down here too. What we do not want to do is to completely fill in the rose with all of these light kind of sliced in petals. You still want to see some of the background, you want to see some of the dark color, you want to see some of the pink on there, but enough just to give the impression of a rose. And as I look at this, I'm just looking to see if there are any areas that desperately need a little petal. And if it's not in desperate need of a petal, then don't put one there. If it's just in minor need of a petal, you can put one there. Okay, so I think that is plenty of uh, light pink action here on the rose. So let's look at that up close. And I will bring in the original painting. And you can see the structure is very similar, but there are you know, just some differences that happen as you are painting, uh, but you get the idea of the top back of the rose, the top edge of the front of the rose, and then those beautiful petals that are kind of spilling out from the flower itself. The key things to remember are no water and very little paint. Um, you keep it as dry as you can and keep your brush pretty free of paint so that you have the background color showing through and you will create a lovely flower. So that's how you paint a palette knife rose. So thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again in our next live.